Hi there, this is Ron Rogers, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about flight testing back in the late 70s. Now, the ability for an aircraft to look down and shoot down on another aircraft was just coming about. The AIM-9L missile that could pick out a moving heat source was a brand new missile we were flight testing, and the radar, the ability to find people down low, was being tested and was being... An, was evolving now i one time uh we had a 38 now up in the mountain area and i thought i was buried in the trees and and there was an f-15 at a god awful distance away from me and he told me my altitude my airspeed my heading and i'm going i can't believe this but he did a great job of picking me out but we had a lot of missions where uh, we had to go very fast and very low and you think the desert is fairly unoccupied well not always and we had a few interesting things and now that i do a few google maps uh it's kind of interesting to see some of the uh the places down there that maybe they cropped up after i was gone because we're talking 50 years ago but um i don't know it uh, the desert is not as vacant as you think, and that caused a few interesting issues going fast and going low. Now, we did a lot of testing, and, and, and to tell you how long ago this was in the whole scheme of things, this is a flight I was on uh, where we were comparing the performance. You can see them through the F-4 there of the 15 and the 16. This was a fly-off between the 15 and the 16 to see how well they compared in performance. It was very interesting, all classified information, of course, way back then. But um, this was one of our, our one of our flights. Now, this wasn't so low of altitude because they were up doing performance issues, so it wasn't any masking or stuff. But uh, this was part of the high-speed flight in the R-2508 complex. Now, this is the little map I carried with, with me. Now, I, I pretty much had this all memorized, so I really didn't need it. But this is my little hand-drawn map of, of the restricted areas and things like that. And uh, that hash part is uh, one of the supersonic corridors. Uh, and that, that actually, that um, uh, green one that goes through the thing with the number two on it. Uh, one and two are spin areas. But the green thing is the high-altitude supersonic corridor that went right over the base. And I'd tell my wife when I was going to boom and stuff like that. But that's digressing. The, the, the thing I want to talk about here is Cords Road. Now, anybody who's out there uh, and done any testing, they know about Cords Road. This is a long, straight road uh, where you could use as a reference and we'd line up on it. We'd have... Uh, like the T-38, uh, we had about 20 of them, and it was a good aircraft to be a, to, to act as a radar target. Infrared target, radar target would be very low. Uh, they'd want you down. Um, supposedly, airspace only went to 300 feet, and below that, you were back to normal speeds. But no, they wanted you down um, at about 100 feet or less, stuff like that, and going very fast, five to 600 knots, simulating a penetrating aircraft. And right there is where Cords Road is my map. But when I went back and Googled this, I found a bunch of roads listed. I couldn't find anyone called Cords Road, which is a lot, little interesting. Now, we had two major highways at each end of this. We had Highway 14 on the uh, west side and Highway 395 on the east. And they kind of were the boundaries of Cords Road in a certain respect. But you went past those and sometimes without the best results, let me put it that way. But um, when I had driven these roads at one time, uh, I, I saw a sign. It says, you know, beware is right near, you know, Cords Road. It says, beware of low flying aircraft. I don't have a picture of the actual uh, sign in place there, but it was similar to this. Beware of low flying aircraft because we did have some issues um, with people on the roads and our aircraft. Now, this is the T-38, which uh, uh, is a very nice uh could function as a very nice target. It's relatively cheap aircraft to operate, so it was really good for this type of mission. And this is kind of a view of Cords Road here. And we'd get down there. I'm, I'm a little bit on the high side here. We'd get down uh, trying to be kind of um, near the top of the telephone poles there, but of course the danger when you're that low is you have to watch out for all sorts of obstacles. And here we are going fast. Um, we're a little bit uh, to the left of Cords Road. Now, what would happen every once in a while was it, Cords Road would be crowded with another test, so we'd have to, to move out a little bit. And uh, as you can see, we're going towards some uh, mountainous or, you know, hilly terrain. Let's call it that. It's not quite mountains. But um, at the east end of Cords Road, there was a uh, plateau. Now, back in the, in the um, uh, mid to late 70s, uh, we had 
kind of an oil crisis going on and there weren't a lot of people out there um in uh, rvs and stuff like that so we'd go up and down cords road didn't have to worry about anything but one time i'm going down cords road uh, i'm doing about yeah, 500 knots or so and at the end was this plateau and these areas had already been always been vacant and when i come across the plateau you don't want to loft high because that makes it easy for them to pick you out as a radar target so as i came up i just creased the end i rolled inverted uh came across the top and oh that's interesting uh came across the top and i was eyeball to eyeball with a guy on a motorcycle and it was funny. The place had always been kind of vacant. It was full of campers and RVs. The uh, fuel crisis had kind of ended. Uh, the Arab oil embargo had kind of ended. And it was full of RVs and campers. And I'm coming across these people inverted at 500 knots. And I remember the guy in the motorcycle. I probably gave him a few uh, tread marks in his shorts because uh, uh, I, could see, I could see his green helmet and goggles. I mean, that's how close I was to this guy. And this is off the east end. There's Highway uh, 395 there, which was kind of one of the borders. And interesting thing about this, they had a couple of uh, uh, high voltage lines that ran across. And this is one of the things you really have to be conscious as um, uh, high speed, low altitude uh, is uh, y you see the the tower there with the green. Uh and you notice the tower with the red. Well, the tower with the green is a lot lower. You don't want to psych in on those power lines because there's a really tall one behind it. So you have to make sure that's plenty clear. And um, there's, there's just a lot out there. I didn't know there was a desert tortoise reservation natural area. I don't know if that existed when I was out there. But uh, there were a lot of places uh, that I, I we, uh, we probably caused a little bit of heartache. Uh, Edwards didn't really get a whole bunch of noise complaints. They were pretty much used to it. But uh, the one day there was a noise complaint. It was kind of interesting. The B-1 was doing a bunch of supersonic runs. And I mean, these people are used to it. California City, which I'll talk about in a second, just north of the base there. They're used to all this. But after four hours of supersonic runs, you know, talk about the, uh, the fuel capacity of the B-1, uh, after four hours of supersonic runs, even the people in Cal City were calling in, uh, um, you know, complaining about the noise. And here we are maneuvering. There's a couple of other aircraft. It's kind of hard to see. I know I, I didn't get the dirt off this slide very well, but uh, we're doing a, a low altitude rejoin here after a, a test mission with a 15 and 16 and actually an F4 out there. But along Cords Road, like I said, it was fairly vacant. You'd see weird stuff out there, uh, stuff left in the desert, and it stays there forever. And there's a little butte. See, that's what you had to be careful of. And one time I was trying to get down um, just towards the top of a uh, row of telephone poles, and it just looked low. I mean, it just looked low. And finally I realized that I was trying to sight in on a, on a fence post, so I decided I'd take it up a little bit. But here's another engagement here, uh, and if you you see the two aircraft there that are uh, coming at us, and uh, we're low here, you you know you can't sense the speed because it's a uh, you know I don't have video of this. Uh, um, back then, uh, getting video was eight millimeter film, and that was that was pretty bad. And I and I um, I only did a very few <laughs> uh, times when I took that eight millimeter camera along. But now Cords Road ran kind of in the south portion of California City, but this is the California City Airport. And uh, when we had to move it north, um, we actually, I actually ended up going uh, through the traffic pattern. I was at about 100 feet, which uh, when people are on base to final, they're usually not there. But I remember I'm going at a little bit over 500 knots, and I see this guy base to final in the traffic pattern and of course at the speed difference um i think it was an apache or something i i mean i'm going fast and it's like he's he's standing still i don't know if he ever saw me or that uh but if he did it would be kind of scary because when you're the fast mover and you see the guy that's fine but when you're the guy not moving fast uh and you see some guy coming really fast it can be scary now when I was getting out of the Air Force and I got my ATP. I flew an Apache and I, I came up here to California City, uh, the airport, and I was I was just kind of scared to death because I knew how many people around there went very fast. 
And of course, uh, there's the uh, the uh, city airport, and you can see some of the parallel roads up there that we'd line up on. Um, yeah, uh, I know I know how fast we're going, and see and avoid uh, never has worked very well. So um, you know, I I was quite apprehensive. But here's a uh, here's another little thing that when we were testing the YC14 and 15, we had a little airfield out there. Uh, you see, it's kind of in the middle of nowhere. It, this served as the unimproved airfield uh, that they would do uh, the testing on the uh, the YC14 and 15, which of course were kind of melded uh, in together. Uh, and I talk about that in one of my flight tests out at Edwards uh, videos. But they were melded in together uh, to form the C-17. And I never did fly the 14 or the 15. I got to chase it in 02 one time. But uh, I did get to fly the C-17 um, later on. But it's interesting out there. There's um, all sorts of stuff out there. The uh, um, Buddhist Retreat Center. Um, we, I... You know, I don't know if that was out there when I was flying, but if it did, uh, I feel bad because I, I, I you know, these air we're going fast, and uh, you're, uh, you're, you're in kind of the transonic range often, and you don't produce a sonic boom necessarily. Although I went supersonic over these areas too, but you don't necessarily produce a sonic boom. But even the transonic boom um, is is not quiet, you know. Um, so, um, uh, sorry for 50 years ago if I disturbed, uh, um, your meditation and that. There's a lot more on the desert than you really think. And one thing I want to point out here about California City. This was, you know, this is back in the time where, uh, they were selling land in Florida that was kind of in swamps and they were selling this, uh, you know, community out in California for all the people who were going through cold Iowa winters, you could come out to this great city called California City. Well, a lot of California City were just roads that were kind of laid out <clears throat> and people bought their plots and uh, that was the end of it. It was kind of a, um, I don't want to call it scam. Now, like I mentioned, at the east end of the Cord Roads area in R2508, the, the terrain started to go up. So this got to be kind of interesting flying because you had to pull up and uh, you couldn't shield yourself as well uh, in the ground clutter and stuff like that. You had to be aware of the mountains because you're going fast at them at a very low altitude. And out at the west end, there, there's Highway 14, and we had an issue where uh, an F-4 was flying very low, and I forget exactly the mission, but he um, went right over the top of some lady in her car, and he was probably less than 100 feet, and it just scared the bejeebies out of her. And she actually drove off, into, uh, off the side of the road there. So they said, hey, guys, you know, don't go directly over cars, which is just common sense, you know. And so I remember going on Cords Road or some of the parallels going very fast and you'd see the cars going like this. And you'd kind of pick a spot where you went in between them. Um, and one thing I used to do for fun, I'd fly along when we're just going out flying for fun. I'd fly right along Highway uh, uh, 14 typically because um, we'd go up to, to some of the nice areas in the mountain to view. And I'd go around 14 and I'd be like just at um, 100 feet or so going 600 knots and passing cars like they're standing still. And I'm sure there's a few young kids down there who say, I want to do that because it looked cool. And then I'd, I'd be flying down one side and we'd pull up, do an aileron roll over the top and pull down the other side. It was just a lot of fun. But um, going west past uh, 14 could be dangerous. And of course, there's a Zen center. And I think uh, we we probably ruined their moment of Zen more than once. But uh, once you got in this area, uh, that was pretty much you were at the end. You had you had to be done because it's starting to get hilly. Uh, you're getting nor uh, towards Tehachapi. Uh, it's getting more populated, and the terrain is getting more dangerous. So you had to really be careful. And um, you know, like we 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 probably didn't do any favors to the Mountain Valley RV park, but. Um, uh, also right there, uh, uh, next to that is the, uh, Tehachapi airport. And I actually flew gliders out of there at one time. So there's a lot of civilian traffic out there and we were not really supposed to go this far into this area. Uh, only, uh, we, we stayed kind of in our airspace if we needed to go up through the mountains and act as a radar target buried in the hills there. But, uh, we did have a T-38 that I think it had a midair with a, a, a 206, a Cessna 206 there. Um, that, uh, that did not, uh, turn out well for, uh, for anybody. So we, we tended to avoid this area and, and you just didn't want to get that far out. 
One last thing I'll comment. Uh, one thing I, I enjoyed about this. Now, I, I, I hope I didn't upset anybody from uh, California City. Um, and I think it's it's grown up quite well uh, since then. But used to go out to Shakey's uh, Pizza Parlor back. I think that chain has probably been out of business now. I think they've been gone for a long time. But they had a thing called Mojo's, which were uh, breaded uh, flat strips of potato that they put in a pressure cooker and uh, I, those are the the most uh, I, I really enjoyed those those were so tasty and um, I tried to duplicate it uh, with a pressure cooker but was never very successful but that was one of my fond memories of California City we'd go up to Shakey's and we'd have pizza and mojos and that so anyway um, I hope you enjoyed this little uh, discussion about our Cords Road test area and kind of the flying out there and how we did it and precautions and issues and things like that. So I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for following along.